everyone welcome back to the channel it's patricia today in my video i'll be talking to you guys about the reasons why not to live in calgary now with any other city there's pros and cons to living in each city but um these are kind of the things that people don't talk about when living here so i thought i'd just address some of it and just a disclaimer i do like living here um if i did not i would not be living here anymore um, but I thought I'd just name some things um, to make you help decide if you want to live here or not. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to see these types of videos and uh, vlogs around the city, uh, that would be awesome if you could subscribe. And if you like this video, uh, just give it a thumbs up. I have about seven reasons why not to live in Calgary. The first one is obviously um, what you probably all know of is the cold weather and the unpredictable weather um, that Calgary has. Usually with the weather here, um, one day it will be minus 10, minus 20, and then the next day it could be positive 20. So you always have to carry a jacket or um, some layers. Seasons can also skip here as well. So for example, we might not have a spring or we might not have a fall. It could go from like summer to like winter or from winter to summer. So it's very, very unpredictable. Also, there's hail that occurs um, randomly throughout the time here. It can ruin cars, homes, um, and a whole bunch of things. Another one for weather is that we have very short summers here. The summers usually last, um, well, start around end of May, and then they only last until about uh, August. Um, so only maybe two full months of summer. And also last year, um, throughout I believe the month of July to August, um, there was like a month where we had lots of wildfires. So um, when you look outside, it looked like it was gloomy day, but it was actually the smoke in the uh, from the wildfires. With the smoke from the wildfires, um, it was really, you could smell the smoke outside and you kind of feel it in the air because it is dry. And every year, um, it's, we can't really predict if there's going to be wildfires um, and or how long they will last for. With that being said, uh, we do have short summers, but they're actually really nice when there's no wildfires. Another reason not to live in Calgary is that if you, uh, develop migraines or you have sinus issues, um, it will enhance it even more. Just because of the pressures in the air here um, and the changes of pressures um, could put a lot of toll on your sinuses. With my experience, um, I usually have sinus issues and I'm allergic to a lot of environmental things. Um, since I moved here, half the time my nose is clogged, I can't breathe properly and my sinuses have been acting up. And I also do get lots of migraines as well um, compared to living in Ontario. For some people, it's a little, bear, they can bear it, but uh, for me, sometimes it really takes a toll on me. Um, so I'm actually going to get checked and see what they can do about it. But it's just kind of a very common thing when you move out here, especially if you move from Ontario. I also found that I've been drinking way more water um, since I was out here. Um, like I'll still even be dehydrated or feel dehydrated after I've had like a liter of water. Um, it's just kind of that type of uh, climate. Another reason why uh, not to live in Calgary, it is very dry here. And I'm talking about very, very dry. Usually my skin is very oily and moisturized. Like no matter, like I usually do like a really good skincare routine and I do that here and even, I even put uh, Aquaphor on my face this winter and my skin, I woke up with my skin still dry. Also noticed um, with the water as well that it does cause uh, dryness in your hair and I believe they, there's something in the water here that makes your hair uh, thinner. I, I don't know, I've noticed like my hair uh, density has changed since I've moved here. Also, I used to have really blonde hair. Now my hair is kind of like an ashier brown. Um, I don't know why, but it's changed uh, within the year. And as I mentioned before, um, with the dryness, I keep drinking lots and lots of water and it still seems like it's not enough. This is not sponsored by any of these companies, but I thought I'd mention um, kind of what I used to use for my skin when I lived in Ontario versus what I live here. So when I lived in Ontario, I would do my normal skincare routine. Um, also, I would only use like a lotion 
after um, my full skincare routine with the serums, etc. Um, so I would I used to use this moisturizing lotion by CeraVe, and now um, I switched over to using this cream, moisturizing cream for my face because it's really really dry. Um, also, I use another cream on top of it uh, for the nighttime. Uh, the Sika Plast Balm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it's by La Roche Posay. I use this on top of my skin after the moisturizing cream at nighttime, so my skin stays um, hydrated throughout the night because I feel like I lose a lot of water throughout the night. For your skin, um, I use the Curel Extreme Care. Uh, moisturizer uh, just or not moisturizer but the lotion um, I just use it right after I get out of the shower and it seems to keep my skin hydrated you can buy these products at your local drugstore um, or I have them linked down below uh, in the description um, I do earn a little bit of commission um, off of them if you would like to make a purchase so it's just easier to get shipped to your house if you would like to use the links or if you've ever tried these products before um, I would really appreciate you clicking on them because it's really dry here I use a human humidifier and an air purifier um, sometimes I still don't think it's enough but I think um, because my apartment's really small um, there's like heaters all around the apartment so it does make it extra dry compared to uh, some other places that you might live the next reason why um, to not live here is that uh, if you like a really nice car or to keep your car really nice um, the roads here um, are pretty bad. I've mentioned before in my previous videos that your windshield can get destroyed. Um, there's like lots of rocks, salt, and gravel on the roads, um, either in the residential areas or on the highways. Um, you'll find that you will get chips and stuff all over your car. Um, so if you like to keep your car in really good condition, um, I mean, that's, that's what it is here. Um, it's definitely not like Ontario where uh, they just use salt and then the roads are pretty clean. The roads are not really cleaned here, especially after a snowfall. Um, and because it gets so cold, there's like sheets of ice. You think they're like snow, they're like snow but it's actually ice that's on the ground. Um, and then when it melts, um, because of the salt and the gravel and the sand, uh, your car gets really, really dirty fast. For example, this is the ice on the ground that I'm talking about. It can be very slippery and I've seen so many people fall. I recommend you keep two things of windshield wiper fluid in your car um, because you don't want to run out of that, especially if there's a whole bunch of mud flying at your windshield and you can't see. When the Chinooks happen as well, um, it will be like winter and then like spring the next day and then it will be like winter again the next day um, and it can get very very icy so you need to watch out for the black ice. Um, I would recommend getting winter tires or all season or sorry all weather tires. Um, I currently have the all season it's been okay but I'm a very defensive and cautious driver. Um, just kind of depends on how you drive, but if you were to get winter tires, um, I would recommend that for the winter season. Most people get their winter tires on here um, around either September or October, and then they get them taken off in May, um, at the end of the long weekend in May, um, because sometimes it can snow throughout random times. When you're driving, um, if you're following like a GPS, um, the roads aren't really built great where you can do a quick turnaround. Um, so when you're driving, if you take the wrong turn, uh, you can go into like a detour of like 10 minutes and then to actually get to your destination, it'll take an extra 10 minutes or so. Um, I find like this kind of being frustrated because your GPS will show you one way and then it will split into four different types of lanes or turnoffs and that's what can kind of get confusing. You just kind of need to look out for that and kind of pay attention to like what it's telling you on the GPS and then kind of uh, look at the signs. Guys, it literally just happened to me where I was driving, I dropped off, um, well I sell lashes, false lashes here locally and literally I took the wrong turn downtown and now I'm doing a like 10 minutes. Um, there are a lot of aggressive drivers here in Alberta, uh, especially in Calgary. I don't know why. Um, I know a lot of people aren't from Calgary, but the people that are, I find a lot of people get confused driving when, especially you're on like Deerfoot or something, you'll see someone just go straight and then you'll see them 
like last minute go turn off. Um, also, like what I've mentioned earlier, people get kind of confused what turn off is what and which way they're supposed to be going. So you need to look out when you're driving. I've seen several occasions where someone will be tailing someone and they accidentally like break because of whatever or and then i find that if the person behind them gets really upset at the person in front of them they start to follow them to wherever they're going um, and even if they're weaving in and out of traffic they will follow them and ride their tail pretty much i've gotten questions about the nightlife here in calgary um, it's definitely not like Toronto where there's lots of clubs and lots of different things all around. Um, it's still better than some smaller cities here. We do have a few lounges and obviously bars and restaurants. But if you're looking for something like Toronto or even like Miami, LA, things like that, um, you probably won't find any of that here. Best places to check out are Stephen Avenue or 17th Avenue. Another thing I'd like to address is the wildlife that appears in the city. Because Calgary keeps expanding, um, sometimes wildlife may appear in residential areas or randomly at the parks. This may include coyotes, lynxes, bobcats, cougars, moose, and other sorts of like that. The last thing I'd like to mention is um, the unemployment here. Um, I find there's a lot of people trying to find jobs or have like great careers and titles and stuff like that. And it's very hard for them to find a job within a short period of time. So I recommend you getting a job before you come out here. I've noticed um, for the job sector, I've noticed that uh, they have are hiring mostly in healthcare, uh, trucking, towing industries, food and beverage jobs, uh, trades, um, delivery drivers and courier drivers, uh, and um, I'd say like retail places. Obviously, if you have a specialty, um, you can kind of look that up, but those are the most common jobs I see here. So wrap up my video, um, this is kind of what I thought was kind of some turnoffs um, with Alberta or Calgary in general, um, but it's based by everyone's different opinion, and these are kind of the main ones that I've just mentioned. Hope you liked the video today. I um, hope it was informative for you. Um, if you'd like to comment uh, what you, more you'd like to see, uh, I'd appreciate it. And also, uh, don't forget to like the video. I'd like to thank you for watching, and uh, see you next time.